Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Risk disclaimer, trading equities, futures, and cryptocurrencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, so for more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, there is a 14-day free trial of Bookmap. It comes with education. Okay, you get the, the platform uh, as well as uh, the Bookmap educational course. Uh, and then you get access to the advanced order flow webinars, uh, and those start in about a half hour. Um, so this webinar is open to the public and uh, it's for going over just the, the basics, understanding what Bookmap is, what it's displaying, uh, how to use it, uh, and um, we'll go over some of the order flow analysis, but the uh, advanced order flow analysis uh, is what we really go into detail uh, in the next webinar, uh, and that's for people who are in trial or current users. So they've gone beyond understanding just the basics of the platform uh, and don't want to be interrupted. Uh, they want to understand uh, looking for opportunities uh, in the order flow and how Bookmap is is uh, clearly showing that. Okay, so that, that's the distinction between the two. Um, and um, if you have any questions or issues, you can always reach out at uh, support at bookmap.com. Okay, let me show you the uh, the website here. I just briefly go through it. Uh, you come into bookmap.com and uh, scroll down. There's an intro video here. It's just a couple of minutes long. Uh, information about the platform. You can also sign up for the this this webinar. Uh, you may have signed up through this link here. Uh, and um, uh, about a bit further down, just more information about Bookmap. Um, some testimonials. Uh, there's Bookmap for equities. Okay, so for U.S. equities, you can have a, a Bookmap through Nasdaq Total View. Uh, it's a great data feed. Uh, you know, we're not a data provider, uh, so uh, you will need a data feed. Okay, so that leads into this next section here. Um, these are the different ways of connecting Bookmap. Okay, we're a software platform. Uh, just like any other platform, like you can see here, Ninja Trader, uh, Trader, um, uh, or uh, TTX Trader Pro, okay, and then also uh, Interactive Brokers uh, Traders Workstation. Okay, these three are platforms as well. However, we do connect via the API of these three platforms. Uh, we're just a platform like they are, though, so you can connect Bookmap directly to your CQG, Rhythmic, Gain Capital, IQ Feed. Transact or through uh, Dev Experts for the uh, NASDAQ total view. Okay. Okay, pricing information here. Uh, so there's uh, uh, one version of Bookmap, really. Uh, it's Bookmap Basic. It's 49 per month. It's billed quarterly. And you get that 14 day trial period. Um, the uh, Bookmap Advanced here, well, it's the same as the Bookmap Basic. However, it just has uh, additional features, okay, several. Uh, one is the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart, which is a big benefit because you have the liquidity heat map right there in front of you and you can react to it uh, very quickly. Uh, then we have these proprietary indicators that we put together uh, that uh, look at you know, various um, uh, phenomena in the order flow or uh, with the uh, uh, imbalances, for example, here. Uh, order book, volume imbalances, or specific players. So we're starting to target uh, larger players with a large lot tracker and iceberg detector. Okay, this is these are two uh, indicators that uh, start to identify uh, not only the order flow uh, phenomenon but the the individual players. Okay, and then uh, there's also a correlation tracker here for looking at various markets all together. Uh, if you're quant, please reach out to us here. Uh, for more information, and uh, we've worked with several. Uh, one note on that, if you are a quant, uh, we are uh, busy here working on the Bookmap version 7, so uh, uh, we won't be able to um, uh, really get to some of your very specific needs uh, until after re after the release, okay? Because okay, you're going to have very specific needs for your own data, proprietary indicators, etc. cetera. Uh, now, if you're new to futures, uh, you can, uh, uh, and you need a data feed as well. Well, you can get a trial of a data feed here. Uh, it's not through us. It's just these are just links to 
uh, other uh, uh, free trials out there uh, for a couple weeks. So therefore, you can uh, get the, the data as well as the free trial of Bookmap, okay, for Bookmap Advanced or Basic. Uh, and then um, there's a list here, complete list of the feature comparisons if you want to see the differences between uh, all the different features in these uh, versions here. Okay. Now, you can also follow us here on Twitter uh, at bookmap underscore pro for the latest updates and information. Uh, and then you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Uh, all sorts of videos here. I would recommend looking at some of the intro videos to begin with, <clears throat> maybe some of the features and components. Uh, and then these order flow video snippets I think you'll find really helpful. Uh, these go into some of the order flow phenomena in detail. Uh, that uh, we go through uh, in, in um, uh, a lot of detail in the um, uh, advanced order flow webinars. Okay, so uh, the details here, uh, they're, they're concise. Uh, these are short. Uh, it's, it's covering the concept. Okay, and the, uh, the details we go into the webinar are, uh, you know, long and drawn out. Uh, and answer any questions that you have to really understand what you're looking at in Bookmap and how to take advantage of the phenomena that you see. All right, so let's jump into Bookmap and take a look here. Um, what is it uh, and um, uh, how, how do you use it? Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a software um, uh, trading platform uh, and um, you can see all sorts of data here. Okay, now this is that version 7.0 that I, I was mentioning. Uh, it might look a little different if you're in trial right now. Uh, so the colored heat map is one of the big distinctions as you can see. Okay, now although this looks really complex, it's actually really straightforward. Uh, there's only three elements on this book map chart. Okay, historical best bid and offer, the um, volume, that traded on that historical best bid and offer. That's all of these dots that you see here. And then the liquidity heat map, okay? So this, this kind of um, uh, heat map that you see here from, and you can see up here the heat map is uh, from uh, kind of gray, dark gray, uh, to blue, to white, to yellow, to orange, okay? So areas that are orange uh, are the highest areas of liquidity, okay? So uh, that's what we're displaying here. There's just, there's just these three elements. Now, let me go through it in detail here uh, so you understand, uh, and we'll just take off uh, all of these um, uh, other elements here, uh, and then we're just going to look at the uh, a candlestick chart here, okay? So we all understand what a candlestick chart is. It's open, high, low, and close of a five-minute period, uh, and... Um, a, a lot of opaqueness here, okay? We only, <laughs> within a five minute period, we only have four data points, open, high, low, and close. And uh, we have no clue uh, where the volume traded here. There's microstructural areas in here uh, that are significant. They give us a lot of insight. The, the reason that this candlestick chart uh, is opaque is because it aggregates all that data within a five minute period, okay? So we can't see that microstructure. And you'll see when I turn this on, uh, you're going to see all sorts of details here uh, that are going to give a lot of insight to uh, the, the movement of price. Uh, and then on that microstructure, we want to understand how the volume reacted, uh, little breaks of those areas or buildups of volume within those areas, uh, et cetera. So we want to understand where the volume traded, when, how much, and what type, aggressor, uh, classification of volume is what we use, and it's either, um, you know, aggressive uh, buying or selling, okay? Market buys and market sells, okay? So uh, that's a problem here uh, in this candlestick chart. So let's just uh, take a look here at first, that's the best bid and offer, okay? And start to understand uh, how this uh, candlestick is uh, not giving us information here uh, of what's going on. Okay, so we can see here at 9.30, the open, the cash open, uh, you know, kind of a quick blip up before actually 9.30, uh, and then it just basically uh, it, it immediately goes to the downside, um, and then um, and then we see the uh, a, a nice drive out of that area to the upside. Okay, uh, so for for uh, for instance, uh, look at this little microstructural area here. Okay, so it 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 broke to the upside 
kind of based sideways here. Okay, it broke down, uh, and then you can see you can see the re this little retest right here. Okay, where did this retest? Let me zoom into this area. Okay, see this little retest here. Okay, it retested back up into or just just to the edge of that range, and it accepted lower. Okay, so this is one of the things, for example, we look uh, for uh, in the um, uh, advanced order flow analysis to understand acceptance uh, above and below uh, specific um, uh, ranges. Okay, you don't see any of that within this candlestick chart. You just have this kind of um, semi doji type of uh, candle here, or, or shooting star, I, I should say. Um, and uh, really, uh, uh, no no information here on on this candle. Uh, you just see that it closed lower than uh, these uh, past three. But here in the microstructure, look what we're looking at here. Okay, we can see a reversal pattern, right? Shoulder, head, shoulder. Okay, and where where did it break? It broke here, above this range here. Okay, so and we can see that it drove to the upside, back into this previous range here. The, actually, the point of control of this previous range here. Okay, and that's initially where it it, it uh, either. Uh, these uh, players started to take profits, which is uh, most likely, uh, and then um, uh, and then we can see that uh, we kind of base sideways, so we didn't find sellers up here, okay, uh, or not many. And in, in fact, we broke a, we broke above this, and we broke above this range here. Okay, this is off to the upside now. All of that kind of detail here, just with historical best bid and offer, is already giving us insight. Okay, but let's put the volume on. And let's get a real picture of what's going on here. Okay. Well, here's the open. Lots of volume, of course. Uh, and then um, uh, you can see the uh, the move to the downside here. Uh, and then um, uh, let me uh, just uh, want to play around with this new feature. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and we can see the, uh, uh, you know, volume trading at lower lows here. Um, this is typical of a trending environment. And um, uh, on these lower uh, highs here, uh, there's uh, less volume. Okay. But that changes here. Here's our breakout of this range. Okay. And who's in control now? Buyers. Okay. This is just the traded volume. We haven't even looked at the auction yet, but we're already understanding the pattern and we're already understanding the, the break of that pattern and who's in control in terms of volume. Okay, it's all here in the in the volume dots. Okay, and we can we can just see it. It's, it's a visual representation. Now let's zoom into this area here, and we'll get more insight. Okay, so this is exactly what occurred here. All right. Now uh, you can see the break to the upside. Now there's a we're we're zoomed in and we're just basically at. Um, uh, millisecond level here. We can continue to zoom in, uh, but we're already seeing a bit of latency here because all of this volume traded very, very quickly, right? And you can see that the uh, the historical best bid and offer here was lagging a bit, right? It uh, uh, there's two different protocol. The way that uh, uh, the data comes into uh, our machines, uh, one is trade data, and the other one is quotes data. Okay, and there's a little bit of latency here uh, that we can see. Uh, usually, uh, uh, I'm, I'm connected with Rhythmic. It's usually pretty spot on here, uh, but uh, there, there's times when you, when you see this, and especially with uh, big fast moves, uh, you'll get a little little bit of latency sometimes. All right, so let's just zoom into this area here instead, and you can see uh, historical best offer and best bid is the green line. Okay, now these little dots here, that's the volume, okay, and that's it. I mean, that's all we're looking at here. Uh, and um, uh, this dot here, and we can use the data tip tool, okay, hover over it, and you can see that I get the date, the time, what was on the ask here, and the volume, volume of one at this price price level. Okay, so that's what really occurred here. Now we can zoom in, and we can we can we can really check it out. And we're down at microsecond level. We can go down to nanosecond level. We can look at billions of seconds. Okay, that would be good for you, you uh, quants, as well as uh, uh, anyone who's uh, uh, trading with um, uh, their uh, automated strategies and want to see exactly what occurred and how your algorithm is performing. Okay, now most of us don't trade at those levels, so 
what we do is we zoom out and you can see that I'm starting to compress all of that data here and it compresses into a bigger dot okay and in, in, uh, in this area here let me scale it up a little bit okay so that was the, that was that area here it's just one big green dot with a little bit of selling in it okay that's our breakout right here that's what occurred we can hover over that dot and you can see it's a this, it represents 117 contracts okay at the price level that's a vwap there that is we're giving you the overall because there was many there was 100 well we don't know how many events here uh took place trading events but we know that there was a volume of 117 over uh an area of of uh, within time uh we recorded all of that data and we give you the overall vwap all right so uh, that's what uh, what occurred, and uh, and we can start to understand now uh, who's in control, and uh, we're just looking at the uh, the volume here. Okay, there's a whole other side of the market that we want to understand, and I'm going to go to the current market for that. Okay, so this is current price right now, right here, and uh, you here the look at this um, uh, vertical white line. Uh, to the right of this is live data. Okay, so this is your best bid and offer right now. Okay, and this is your last traded volume. Okay, and then here's your price ladder. Okay, and then the COB column, it stands for current order book. What this is showing you here uh, is the um, the dome, okay, the depth of market. Okay, that's what the dome looks like here in Bookmap. And um, uh, you can see the areas of liquidity. Okay, now most of us are, are very familiar with a traditional dome. Uh, and setting orders within it, etc. Uh, in Bookmap, uh, we we show the dome uh, like this, uh, and it's good to see these levels of liquidity. However, the problem here right now is that when these numbers change, and they change all the time, as you can see, um, this data is not recorded. Okay, and that's a problem because we can't we we want to understand uh, more specifically. Uh, how are traders bidding and offering uh, and their levels of interest? Okay, the way that Bookmap solves that issue is by recording it in the heat map. Okay, and uh, I'm going to adjust up the heat map quite a bit here just so that uh, uh, we can uh, see some of the uh, some of the details. All right, so areas of high liquidity here are orange, 115 contracts here at 98. Okay, at, up here at 99, you can see 72 contracts, right? And uh, it's, uh, it's yellow. Okay, so, uh, and this is all live, this window here. Okay, and you'll see when the, when the numbers change, the heat map will change. Okay, uh, and um, now the heat map changes, but you can see that it's all recorded and plotted onto the chart historically. Okay, so these areas here, you can see, for example, this is adding and pulling of liquidity. This is what it looks like. Okay. So we know that down at this area here at 94, there's some interest. Okay, they're pulling, they're adding and pulling in and out of the book. In fact, you can we can even start to identify not only are they are kind of interested at this level, um, they they showed the, a little bit of a, a disinterest. They pulled the majority of their liquidity here and added two ticks lower. So they're down here, and then they added a little bit more in. Okay, so we're starting to understand re really what's going on in the auction. And okay? now look at them uh, here now with 97 contracts here at uh, 95 and a quarter. Okay, they just jumped in the book. It's skewing the auction, and it looks like we're going to come up and test 98. Okay, because all of a sudden there's a lot of buying. Interest. Now there's 100 contracts here. Okay, so I'm looking for this to come up and test 98. And uh, we're almost we're almost there as it is, but it's this skew in the auction. All of a sudden, this interest jumped in, okay, and it has an effect on price. Okay, just think of any other kind of auction out there, uh, and uh, and and start to use that analogy. Okay, we're we're testing 98 right now. It just traded into 98, 28 contracts. Okay, and uh, they're starting to pull some of these contracts up here now. Where originally there was 115 contracts. Note how it got, you know, uh, uh, a little bit uh, more yellow and then white here. 
So next area is, is 6,500 even, 115 up there. Okay, we just tested 99. That was the next level that was uh, we were looking at previously. Just tested it, and then it sold off. <clears throat> uh, anyway, uh, that's the heat map um, and starting to what we're able to utilize though here with this heat map okay is the current book as you can see here that we've been just kind of dialing into uh, but then uh, what we can do is we can zoom out and we can get a much bigger picture of this heat map okay and let me bring this down or up a bit here and uh, bring down the brightness and I'm just going to highlight here larger players Okay. Where, where are the, in the, on the higher time frame, where are the larger players? Well, they're up here at 6,500. Okay, are they above that as well? No, not really. Uh, for right now, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of selling interest up here at 6,500. Okay, that we know. Okay, look at this little area here. Okay, understanding the auction here within this range. Okay, buyers down here, sellers up here. Okay, it's kind of funny here. The uh, the buyers pulled their liquidity um, on the on the bid here, uh, and, um, and and these guys actually they stayed in the book, and then they started to looks to me like they're starting to pull and then add at higher levels. So they didn't really have the the intent to trade in some of these areas here. We can zoom into that area and we can check it out. Okay, so this is what occurred. Okay, these guys here uh, they they pulled their liquidity on the bid and uh, no longer wanted to be in the market here. Up here, uh, they're they're staying in the book, and, and price comes up into these areas, but they start to pull as price is coming up, and they're adding liquidity higher. Okay, this is this is showing disinterest to trade at some of these levels, and um, uh, it looks like actually we had uh, uh, some nice transactions here, and um, no, they they pulled as well. Okay, we can see the details here, so we can under we st we can start to understand and decipher the liquidity. Was this real liquidity? Did they have the intent to trade here? And the answer is no. Okay, it's fake liquidity because they pulled. Okay, they didn't want to trade. The majority of those players. Okay, now we'll see other areas where it trades right into it, and uh, they wanted to trade. Uh, let's see, Bobby, you have a question. Um, Uh, yeah, the um, the newer version uh, coming out, um, I, I believe, has the um, a different a different offerings for historical data. Okay, so uh, what what uh, Bobby is asking here is about uh, uh, once I open up my book map, I start collecting uh, data. Okay, and um, uh, because you know we're looking at the full depth of market here, uh, not just you know open, high, low, close of a period. Uh, we're looking at, um, you know, all, all sorts of data here. And um, uh, that data uh, is, is not free. So um, anyway, the, um, uh, you can, uh, once you open up Bookmap, you start recording it. However, there, we're working on some options here, uh, and it's going to be available in version uh, 7.0 coming out, okay? Okay. All right. Well, here, here's our, uh, we can see where we, we came up into, uh, again, uh, and we, we, you know, we're looking at it when it was uh, starting to break. Uh, we saw that skew in the book here. We tested into 98 and now we just tested into 6,500. Okay. Now they're up here. Okay. Up at, uh, at, at 63, uh, and a half, it looks like something like that. Okay. All right, and then look at the look at the the buyers starting to chase up underneath too. Now this has got to be the same player too. Note how it's high liquidity pulls adds higher, pulls adds higher again here. Okay. All right, so all sorts of information, all sorts of data, um, and a, a lot of clarity and a lot of insight to uh, starting to understand uh, possible future price movements here. Okay. And uh, the beauty of it is uh, that we can look at this on a higher time frame. Okay, so that makes your dome usable not just for the current market, uh, but much higher time frames. 
Okay. All right, guys. Uh, well, thanks for coming. And if uh, you're in trial uh, for the product, we'll see you uh, shortly in the uh, in the next webinar. Okay. Thanks.